Yeah. Yeah. Uh, start the recreation revolving fund ad hoc committee uh, meeting for October 29th. Um, first, let's uh, do the minutes. Get that taken care of. Um, anybody want to move the minutes at all? Or does everybody get a copy? I didn't make a copy, but. Yes, thank you. I'm looking yes. at them right now. Okay. Can we amend kickback to rebate? We can amend anything you'd like to amend. I, I found some comments. <laughs> amend what? Kickback to rebate. Kickback makes it sound like Janet is doing something illegal. I don't like the word. <laughs> and where is that in the? It's under the challenger's camp, I believe the. Second page, second, or first big, first whole paragraph. Um, is Brian going to re um, amend these or? Uh, they came to me as PDF, didn't they? Uh, he would have to. Um, I'll, but I'll get the comments to him and, and get it done. Okay. So um, I circled some things if you are. Yeah. You, you want to read them to me? Or? In this uh, third paragraph where it says discussion continued on the self-imposed. Yeah. Um, on the third line it says adopt he standard. Yeah. I'm not sure what that was supposed to be. The. The, the. I think. It's missing a T. Yeah. Um. The word restrictions I thought was a little bit tight. I, b I believe the intent of that was uh, those types of values that are um, uh, costs that you limited yourself. There was a limitation in regards to uh, if you were, and I'm not, this is not a quoted number, but if the cost of a program was more than $500, then you'd go to the selectmen. If it was under that, you wouldn't. Is this what he was talking about? What we were talking about at that point in time? I think so. So self-imposed cost limitations. Does that sound better? Yes. I wasn't. Yes. Sure. <laughs> I'd say guidelines, but whatever doesn't matter. Cost guidelines. That's fine. Yes. Yeah, guidelines. Okay. Uh, has used to support her department? Or not support, but. To run, manage. Yeah, to manage. Sound good? on that one all right and then we get to ad adopt the standard um, and I would I would tend to turn that into um, our guide our uh, what were we calling those things guidelines oh, uh, uh, bummer We are only making recommendations. Yeah, but we, you know, this we're not even into recommendations. Right. We came up with those um, concerns. Was it charges? I don't know. It was the suggestions, thoughts? No, oh, man. Concepts. We don't like that word. 
but concept might have been the way we were doing that. Um, so then we have in our in the minutes. Yeah, in our minutes, um, the October eight minutes on our homework. It says. Um, Review the list of programs provided in the package for uh, applicability as fee-based or free and for application to the three methodology concepts identified above. And those were the three things that... Yeah, but I'm not talking about that. We came up with... Okay. Brian developed um, some s sets of words. Came up with a statement. Yeah, what do we call that, though? <laughs> But it's our stuff, not our our formula is all I can think of at this point in time, but why can I not find this? Well, Brian's wording from October 8, as I remember it, if you go to the bottom of the first page of the October 8th minutes, uh, some basic not finalized thoughts came out of this discussion. Oh. The first charge discussion methodology, three basic concepts, although not finalized, seem to be prevalent and agreed upon. And if you go to the second page, I believe it was item number three that was Brian's statement. Yeah, okay, so we would, I basically call them basic concepts. That, so those are our, so far, our three basic basic concepts. So, uh, well, we should adopt. Okay, that paragraph I think is fine. I was thinking that was these things. All right, sorry. Sorry. Next paragraph. Any comments? <laughs> You don't need a question mark. It would be the period there. Period where? That's the programming. Um, okay. Feeling from the group was that. Anything else on that paragraph? I think you ought to add the word and um, so that it says from the rec in the recreation department from the general fund and that the likelihood of needing anything noted in the rec revolving is limited. Say that again, Jan. <laughs> the feeling from the group was that there were already funds in the recreation department from the general fund and that the likelihood of needing anything noted in the Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Next paragraph. I had in the second sentence, that seems to be a sentence that should start off with only a few anomalies were found. Yep. Uh, yep. Um, and then the next sentence, event for residents, TS at the end rather than CE, although, although both would pass spell check. Uh, yep, residents. Um, and change kickback to rebate. And challenger should be with an R. Challenger, okay. soccer okay. camp. Okay. What was kickback change to? Rebate. Rebate. And I would change, I would take out the only and just leave consensus was that Nottingham Day does not fit into. And I'm gonna put the group's consensus. Okay. Does, it, um, does not fit our formula or our basic concepts. Yep. Day of Nottingham Day should be capitalized. Was that Janet? Day. Oh, Nottingham Day, yeah. You want it to be Family Day? It should be Nottingham Family Day. 
And it's not really for residents, is it? It's open to the public. Event. It makes it sound like we charge non-residents a fee to come. Uh, free event for the town. Free event, period. A free event and eliminate for residents of the town. Yeah. It's a free event, comma. Or you don't want a comma blunder in there. Yeah. And there was concern. It could be free event for the town, and there was concern over a Challenger soccer camp. Is camp capitalized too? Probably not. As if the rebate from the camp to the RFF. Group consensus okay. was that Nottingham Day does not fit into the RFF and should be removed. Um, would. There is an and in here, but this could be two separate sentences, right? They're not connected by anything, are they? Except that a few anomalies were found. Um, well, those, that sentence, well, I wasn't even here, but that sentence describes the anomaly. So there is a connection between them. Okay. I was going to use oh, we're getting We're getting into syntax here a little bit. I, I understand, but... Were you an English teacher somebody, or a former... Somebody may read this. <laughs> uh, okay. Anything else? So I move to approve the amended minutes. I'll second. I have not gotten the minute, the approved minutes to Don yet, but I'll get that done. Hopefully this weekend. All right. So. I need a vote. Oh, sure. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, more importantly. Abstain. Good choice. All right. Chris, do you have new things or? I have an update uh, to that table of various programs. Okay. With a new column that tries to capture what you were talking about last week, or looking for last week in terms of where the money, which fund the fees go to. We had a column that said there are fees associated with these programs. We didn't tell you where they went. Okay. So that's the, the new final column on the right there. It's the only new bit of information there. Okay. Um, all right, does anything look any kind of different to anybody after we kind of went through that exercise? I know you weren't here, Bill, but um, kind of looked through the old list that was provided, which is very similar to this list, except the additional columns uh, trying to figure out which programs were funded from which funds um, and how they were um, managed through the process this is that's not a column of where they're funded from it's where the fees go to where the fees go to correct right bank equals general fund Okay. Revenue fund. Okay, where the fees go to. Okay. So the blanks actually are NA, not to the general fund, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. Re repeat that. In the in that last column it says blank equals general fund and that's actually should be na because 
None of the blank ones have fees. Right. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so on Nottingham Day, it indicates the the fees, which we don't have any fees for, goes to the Rec Revolving Fund. Vendor payments. And so that would be vendor monies that are produced as part of the event. So those I would think of as fees, but not participant fees. What about the, there are sponsors too, mm -hmm. and they pay money to So, vendor and sponsor. And other, um, you know, we do a silent auction. So all yeah. the so it's a, it's a proceeds fund. from that, proceeds from t-shirt sales. Okay. Oh, I should have worn mine. <laughs> okay, but, but there's no, it's not a fee based. There's no admission <laughs> charge. There's no admission charged. Right. There is revenue that gets produced as a result of holding Nottingham Day. Is that, does yeah. that sum up? Well, yeah. Um. There's also expenses associated with yeah. that event. Yeah. So. The holiday craft fair would be similar in nature, correct? Yes. There's not many expenses for that other than advertising, but. Um, is that playground? It's playground, yes. yeah. That goes in the playground. It goes to, okay. That benefits the. It's a fundraiser. Okay. Okay, so. So Nottingham Day is part of the rec revolving basically to make it, I don't want to word this, um, more efficient for you to run because you can, because the money gets deposited there so then the next year the, the money just kind of goes in and out of that so that you're not having to deal with another fund. It's just easier. Just easier. More efficient. Okay. Some years we hire bands that are, you know, a total $1,000 or $1,500, and some years we hire bands that total $500. So when you're trying to budget in the general fund, but it can be done either way. It's just mm -hmm. trying to figure out a good amount to put in the general fund. So if we were to add another column here of where the expenses come from, would the expenses for Nottingham Day come from Rec Revolving Fund? All right. Except the staff time. Except what? Staff time. Staff time comes from the general fund <coughs> because it's done through the <coughs> Right, but I'm, I'm not in that mode at this point. Okay. That's getting, I think, a little granular right now, but it's an important... Uh, note. And, and other overhead, of course, but we're not going to go there. But right. Just to be... I'm trying to figure out how right. it fit, would fit in with these... <coughs> Columns that are staffed by permanent town staff and some of that kind of stuff. And, um, I, I don't necessarily see that it shouldn't be in the rec revolving fund because some of the fees are, like you said, t shirt sales, uh, the 50 50, or not a 50 50. It's a silent auction. Silent auction, 
all those are kind of fees, uh, as well as when you watch TV and watch a commercial, that's a fee, although it's not paid in cash, it's your time. Mm -hmm. So although the vendors are paying the fee, every resident that goes and looks at different vendors is somewhat watching a commercial. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm going through this. <laughs> Again, just to try and figure that out, because. Participant fees versus, so m the majority of this, the fees come from, par directly from participants. In the form of cash. Right, where these other ones, the money doesn't come from the participants, it comes from the others. Although. Yeah. Figure that out. Most of the vendors are could be considered participants. So if we, if we create an expense column, which is the expenses to run it, not the staff, not the overhead kind of things, um, do these things pretty much match all the way down the play, the playground for craft fair? Some monies come out to pay for expenses associated with that, and then monies that are gained as a result go go back in. Right. So the advertising costs for the craft fair come out of the playground fund, um, and all of the vendor fees go into the playground fund. Okay, martial arts, our rec revolving fund, expenses. Martial arts is a contracted um, thing, so all of those fees go in, and we pay him twenty percent. So I'm sorry. That's we pay. We pay it's okay. Eighty percent, and we keep twenty percent. It's okay. However, that works. <laughs> so, in actuality, he keeps the eighty percent and gives you the twenty percent. So there's quote unquote no expenses associated with martial arts. Other than the mats that we pay for out of the proceeds of martial arts, basically. Okay, so that's expenses. All right. Theater. And, and I'm doing these only because they're on the list. Same kind of deal? Everything goes in and out of the theater account. Okay. Um, flu shot clinic? No money changes. There's hands. no money at all. Um, With us. We just kind of host the space and I create flyers and advertise it yeah. as a service for the town. So there is a fee, but the fee goes to the vendor. Not ten. All right. Uh, Zumba, line dancing, similar. Record volume fun. All the rest of those going down there. They all seem to match. Okay. All right. So the concept that we, one of the basic concepts that we have, which is if it is a fee-based program, those fees go into the, in, in our case, the record revolving fund. That still jives in the general sense. <laughs> okay. Um, and the expenses related to that come out of those. Are there any expenses associated with any of these events? That would be considered not related to that event. <coughs> <laughs> exceptions to that rule. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking for exceptions to the rule. There, there are some that 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 apply to multiple programs, but I think for the most, but like soccer goals would ap apply to three or four of these things. Right, but, but they're it, pretty much but all, they're all in or all out in those direct costs. Right, right. You know, outside of payroll yeah. and overhead. Yeah, and we got some other things that perhaps need to go in, but at least for what we're doing today. It tends to be that way. Uh, well, okay. What about like the van? Isn't that paid out of the rec revolving fund, but it's used Good point. for general it is, town? It is um, out of the rec revolving. Um, it was bought out of the rec revolving, and all the expenses for the van are out of the rec revolving. But any, I'm not going to say that all of it, but it is used to support recreation programs 
that are fee based and non fee based. It's it, yeah, and there are some non fee based programs that it supports, but it does support fee based programs. Yeah, it's about 50 50. If I had to guess, but it's okay. I'm, I'm just trying to find those exceptions. So, is there any other thing that Rec Revolving Fund might pay for that does not support a fee based program? Well, we paid for the 10 year plan out of it. Okay, I don't but. I know if that's. But, and we paid for the van out of it. But other than that. But the van supports program well, in the, the f the van supports the non fee based programs only because we have a van that has a capability of being utilized essentially. Instead of paying mileage out of the general fund, right. we use the van. And same with the report. The report was to do a whole recreation thing which also supports both fee based and non fee based programs. What's yeah. the condition of the van? Is it going to need to be replaced anytime soon? Um, the condition of the van now is fine. Um, I would expect that it, we will never use the mileage, but we expect that it will have rust or rot at some point, um, is why it would have to be replaced. And I expect that in maybe five or six years is my guess. Um, it's f four years old now, four to five years old now, and it has like 10 or 11,000 miles on it. So mileage is never going to be the issue. But. Okay. But if we look at... And just a quick note, it cannot be replaced. We cannot replace it with a 15-passenger van. We either need to go to a 12-passenger van or we need to go to like an uh, airport... Um, shuttle -y. shuttle -y kind of thing, but not 16-passenger because then uh, you would need a different license to do it. Oh, okay. All right, there's like a 14-passenger shuttle kind of van that you could replace it with but it, it, it made it illegal to, use 15, to buy 15 passenger vans okay I was asking that because of um, of our, our number two charge about setting a target amount needed in the rec revolving and so we would want I would think that we would want to make sure that um, there is money in the rec revolving fund at the point where we need to either do some significant repairs or replace it because um, having that has been a really good thing so I would want to make sure that we had that the ability to replace it when the time comes that was definitely part of the conversation So our, ba our number one basic concept was revenues from fee-based programs are deposited into um, the rec revolving fund. I think pretty much without exception, we've nailed that one down. All right. And then expenses directly related to fee-based programs come from the rec revolving fund. I think in all cases where the in where where fee based programs that the expenses related to fee based programs mm -hmm. come out of the rec revolving fund. I think that's also true. Now I think we need to nail down expenses some more to try and um, uh, take that hunk of jello and nail it somehow to the wall. Um, I don't suggest that for this meeting, but maybe for next meeting. Well, does Brian's statement get to that? 
which is number three. Number three. Um, I see that as it's the other. It's getting at at the it, other end. This is for the non-fee based programs, though. This is more. This this is a statement that is more related to if you have a program, how do you how do you work it? I didn't see it that way All in right, terms of the expense. way that it came up because I think it came up in the context of. Um, well, I believe the example was the mowing of the of the field, and that field supports fee-based programs, and uh, it seems to me that was described as for the general good or usage uh, by the town, as opposed to a specific program, because there were a number of. I mean, you, well, you you don't want to have the lawn. A foot long because then it's not a lawn. Uh, that's correct. So okay. the idea you is keep it. You want to keep it mowed. Right. It has nothing to do with whether it's a ball field or anything. Correct. Else. So that's general good. That's it. Yes, that's exactly. But, but that's well, not but fee based or or normal. No, based. and I think. Uh, but I, right. No, no, I understand that. Okay. But, but what I'm saying is there there are expenses associated with fee based programs that, that that there are present expenses associated with fee based programs. Are there other expenses related to those fee-based programs that perhaps should also be covered or specifically identified as not being covered for fee-based programs? This statement doesn't do that. It takes out some of them. I, I think that it does unless you want to micromanage is not a very positive word but unless you want to really uh, and tie this tie this down very very specifically and not allow the professionals involved any latitude you know and you know Chris Janet the selectman yep. or whatever uh, I'm not trying I to tie anything down at this point I'm just trying yeah to I but I like this statement because yep it 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 seems to provide some latitude and at the same time define. Then let me put it to you this way. Is there expenses not associated with number three that might be under number two? I don't happen to think of any. I'm just. I, I don't either. And, and you have me at a disadvantage because I was not here to go through this list with you. It's not a disadvantage. It's, it's, it's yeah, a yeah, list. I, I just can't think of. Well, I think we identified the van as one, but it supports fee-based programs. But it's also for the general good of the. Well, it, it also supports fee-based programs. Number two is expenses associated with. Oh no, I was not, no, I was talking about number three. Oh, the no, van I'm, fits in with number three. Yep. Except that it was bought with rec revolving fund funds. Right. And maintained. And it's, maintained. and it's used for 50 percent of the time for free programs. Right. I, I wouldn't nail that down, but. But a while that was. But it, it's it is used. It used. is used for fee-based programs, which yep. is our number two item. Right. I mean, I'm just trying to put all these things in little pukas. Yes. And yeah. And not quite fitting right. Well, no, they do. I I think they do, if you phrase them properly. Do you have any? ideas of expenses that that pop into that number two item that that could that, that in your mind might pop into the number two item I mean, well there's a there's an incremental cost and overhead in some way shape or form that you'd never pin down uh, and staff time those are the two things that directly benefit fee-based programs and the participants in the fee-based programs, but have no... Can't be quantified? Uh, well, I mean, if you, if you put an, an inordinate amount of time and effort into quantifying it, you could do it. Y yeah. It's not but worth the effort, but you correct. could do it. Correct. I guess um, that's what I'm saying. Uh, but, but if you, I mean, just to, to think about those programs, um, 
overhead and staff time are the two biggest costs of running those programs. So some effort in that regard is probably worthwhile. Um, but when you, you say know. overhead, to me that conjures up concepts of buildings and lands and yeah, those electricity are, and yeah. heat and all that. Yeah, yeah, those are all, there are incremental costs yeah. created by fee-based programs. Whether, whether it's utilities or wear and tear on the facilities or Lights. mowing frequency or whatever. There, there's, you know, insurance, um, you know, uh, you know the, yeah, every, every flavor of yeah. overhead of, yeah. of town operations, you could apply some of that to fee-based programs. Yeah. It, you know, you could take a guess at what it is. And so it's what probably it, not worth the effort. But um, that's one. And then the time that we pay people to do the work right is another one and that's I see the staff one as being something we might be able to quantify in some nature where the other one we would not be able to as long as the recreation department is in this building yeah not unless you apply the same criteria to all people that use this and it's, hey, it's not worth the effort not I mean, yeah, yeah. No. so but if if the rec department was to move to the Marston property with a building and all that kind of stuff that was their own, then I see that coming into play here. Does that? There would still be overhead costs that you would not be able to ferret out. That would, you know. But it would be. But it would be easier. But it would be more pointed yeah. to the recreation department than supervisors yeah, you, of the checklist. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I, I yes, mean, but you would you would end then the flip side of that is non fee based programs would use those same facilities. So that's correct, and that's all right. We're doing the same thing today. It's just the location of, of where things take place. Yep. I'm, but I'm just I think that is something that we can qualify here, um, uh, unless if you go down the path of the overhead charges related to buildings and that kind of stuff that everybody be taxed consistently and I don't know how you would do that necessarily but, but that's okay so from a staff standpoint camps kind of the only one that I know of that has real staff requirements that are paid Other than Courtney and I, you mean? Here we go. There, there are, on this list, there are things that, that take place that are being staffed by people for that particular task, that particular event. You and Courtney, I personally see as general fund. You're managing year-round the programs in the recreate rec department. How much support you give to each one of these programs, I personally don't see as something that we as this committee is ever going to try and figure out and manage, nor do I think we should. At the same time, I do think we have the capability to identify those programs that have staff associated with that that is an expense to someone <laughs> I'm hoping it's all rec revolving fund but I don't know that so we have martial arts that's a vendor thing somebody teaches that there's no staff from Nottingham associated with that. The Nottingham Recreation Department creates the opportunity for martial arts to exist. They handle the, perhaps the cash, the advertising, the putting on the uh, calendar and all that kind of stuff, but, but that's it. Uh, Zumba, if we're still, still doing that or line dancing or whatever, but, still, th but. You, you pay somebody to come in and orchestrate that. And that, <coughs> um, 
there's fees associated that people pay, but there's no staff associated with that. But the recreation department manages the Process. events and the dates and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Camp has counselors that are here only for camp time frame. Is that the only program that has that kind of people associated with it versus the other three examples I gave? Uh, yes. Because anybody for Nottingham Family Day um, uh, are volunteers. If um, we hired anybody that we needed for Nottingham Family Day, they would come out of the Rep Revolving Fund. Um, and when you say when you hire people, you that's not a volunteer, right? Right. So right. that's in the past we have um, we have so so there's some staff, non-volunteer staff. Every once in a while, not every year. Yeah, yeah. right. But, but that gets hired for that specific event, okay. and that comes out of the revolving fund. Um, would referees for soccer or men's basketball, maybe they referee themselves, uh, but soccer, is that an expense that comes out of the rec revolving fund? Yes. And they are hired solely for that, so. Okay, holiday craft fair? Wait. Not usually? Hang on a second. So refs for um for what are paid out of rec revolving for they soccer stipend to them and they are paid out of rec revolving out of the soccer program is that all the soccer ones no oh. um is that the only um wait a minute out of is that the only sport that we pay officials for, or are there other sports that we have to pay officials for? The only other sport that we run uh, is flag football. That is through the Exeter League. We pay, the kids pay a fee, and Exeter charges me a fee, and their ref fees are included in what they charge me. Okay. So there's no separate ref fee for flag football, so yes. Swim lessons? Yeah. Pay somebody to teach swimming? Pay them. Yep. That's what we will be. Yep. And uh, they can. we just changed, so I have to stop and take this. Okay. Thing. But that's considered. Um, <laughs> Specific to a fee program. Yeah. Okay, is that what you're trying to say? A labor cost that is specific to that program. But it's not staff. Are they camp counselors? No, they're specific okay. staff, waterfront staff. Is that the same with um, um, lifeguards? Lifeguards are paid out of the general fund. Okay. Because there's no fee to use the beach, correct? Right, and that's number three. Yes. Yeah. All right. Except for the dump sticker. I like that. Okay. Those are free. <laughs> the dumpsters are free? Oh, I think it's a dump, dump. sticker. It's sticker. Oh. oh, the stickers, yeah. Not totally. Municipal well, use stickers. They're not it dump costs stickers. costs something to buy them, I think. <laughs> yeah, they're, but they're so cheap that they're... Oh, yeah, they're, wicked, I'm sure. They're, real, they're quite inexpensive. Yeah. Don does a good job. Does my recycling bottle take care of that? <laughs> <laughs> Nickel? I don't think so. Okay. All right. So, all right. So that's good with that. Uh, any other comments associated with that? I think we kind of nailed down that portion. As far as the rest of it goes, um, building-wise, uh, I know you'd probably love us to go there, but I don't think we should be doing that. No, I don't think. No, I don't think you need to. I think if if there was a if there was an outlier, or there was some you know 
huge fee-based program that was driving huge facility costs in some way, it might be worth the effort, but it's not. Yeah. We're tending to use what's available here or in town. Yeah. For yeah, we're not taking on additional capital costs for things or whatever. Right. And, the, and the town has long been comfortable yeah. subsidizing those fee-based programs with that overhead in whatever way that is. That, that's fine. That's All right. Um, and I think we got a bunch of examples for three, along with one and two. So, so far, I think those are looking pretty good. Um, I'm sure we'll stumble upon some other things along the way. Uh, all right. What else we got going on? All right. Uh, let's see. Are you checking that clock against kickoff? I am. Okay. You're watching it. <laughs> um, Out of boy. Out of boy. Right. I was going to make a motion that we adjourn at 8.15. No, we, we, we've already discussed <laughs> it. Don't okay. worry which, about it. Which it doesn't works. get you home in no, time. It's all right. <laughs> That's for Comcast. I pay right. Comcast Still looking at eight oh ten dollars $10 a month. For, uh, you get DVR until you yes. catch up with the commercials. Yes. <laughs> so do we feel good about the committee's chart, the Board of Selectmen's committee charge item number one? We feel that we have that quote-unquote nailed down I mean we got to glorify it but I think without necessarily making a final determination I would say that I'm comfortable with it I, I don't know if that's the kind of uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for I mean, yeah the, I think the only thing that we've not discussed really is w with that is is there a um a f a way to determine um staff time that is being used for fee based programs sp m most specifically camp um vacation camp and regular camp um that some of that should be coming back to the general fund to offset the um, the salaries. And I think that that's part of, you know, part of that. Well, that you keep number. bringing that up. So let me ask a question. How do you how do you envision that ever working? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, I've given, it, I've given it a lot of thought because there is a great deal of time. I mean, there's a great deal of time that is is spent by Janet and Courtney, Courtney but it used to be Caroline? Oh. Caroline. Um, that a lot of effort is put into camp, and I think that's a good thing, but it's specifically... Um, paid for by the people who um, who send their kids to camp and I'm just wondering if you know there's some that's way true of every fee-based program and non fee and non fee based program it's a common cost that exists with all now the orchestration of that event I see as being rec revolving fund for fee-based program so I personally don't know how you can just have, if you will, camp arrive. It doesn't just arrive. No. But you want a concerted party to be available to, to do that. You don't want to pay, I, I shouldn't say that. You could pay somebody to come in two weeks before camp starts and go, okay, you got camp. That's not the way you do business. I don't disagree. Okay. So. If the em town employees spent a lot of time as camp counselors, if you will, I see that as something that we would want to accommodate. But as far as managing it and all that kind of stuff, I, I, don't, I don't see us going to that 
that area. No. Only only because I can't see how to how to wrap my arms. This around. this past year, Courtney's salary during camp was paid for out of rec revolving. Correct. Are you, are you aware of that? I was not aware of that. Okay. So there is some effort that has been made to adjust that. For whole salary or just so for so for two thousand and fifteen. Not not her whole salary, but just during, during that camp. During yeah. camp. Courtney's camp time salary. And is it your in intent that that continue for another year? Uh, I mean, well, see, that's part of the problem is that it would it could change each year, and in this case, if if everything continues the way we are now then we would do the same thing next year. However, right now we are looking at buying software. Courtney would be the one working on the software now. Software to do what? Registration, online registration, and like an entirely different way of organizing. Right now we do it in Microsoft Access and we input all of the data into that ourselves from paper waivers. Yep. So we are looking at an operating system that is, you know, rec-based. Um, Chris and I are still talking about which one um, and costs associated with that. Would you be able to use it for more than just camp? Absolutely. Every, every fee-based program okay. that for all to register for. Yep, and it should make it easier for the parents because most of them that I've seen is you set basically set up an account, then you can go in and check off the programs you want to do, which should be simpler than filling out the same exact form over and over and over again. So um, the way I see next year happening is that um, my employee, Nicole, who has worked with the summer, with the um, office assistant for the last quite a few years, she's questionable whether she's coming back or not. And even if she comes back, it will be her last year. And she would walk in a couple of days before camp started. Not really going to work with a brand new program. So um, we would rearrange those positions for next year. Um, if we get the computer software. Um, but and that means that Courtney would be the office assistant, basically. And we will need to uh, most likely take one of the returning staff members and make them basically a coordinator. And it could be, it could be um, the other office assistant I haven't figured that part out yet we have to get to the point of whether or not we're going to do computer software first before I can make the determination on how we're going to rearrange staff but was Courtney a staff camp counselor no. this summer no she was a camp director did she do any rec department work during those seven weeks of camp yes How she did also oversaw the beach when she was at the beach as well. So it's there's a lot of crossover, and so, so now we're talking about lawyer every 15 minutes account for your time as to what project you work on. That's ridiculous. How how did you determine what portion of her time came out of um, the revolving fund and what portion didn't for well, those weeks? Well, I was given amounts by the board of selectmen on how much money that was going to take out, and they. The budget that I have, the, 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 I had a budget, and it was 20 some odd weeks at 25 hours a week, and then 12 weeks at 40 hours a week, um, which was seven and a half for camp, um, plus the week before Nottingham Day, um, vacation weeks, um, it's it's basically a budget number to try to figure out and make sure that I have enough 
money in the general fund on her salary line to cover every event and all the hours that I need her to work for soccer in the fall on, on Saturday mornings, um, the week of Nottingham Day, the week of the Christmas party that we work on Saturdays, um, the va two vacation camp weeks. So I kind of guesstimated at 12 weeks. Um, and when it came to the budget conversations, we took the 12 weeks and took them out of the revolving fund. Um, but what I did was that I took part of the office assistant's salary and took it out of the revolving fund and part of Courtney's 12 weeks, basically the seven and a half weeks that she worked directly on camp and took that out of the revolving fund. So I rearranged, I rearranged the two uh, positions um, and where the money was being taken out of to fit the budget that was given to me. And then this is all approved by the board, right? So, it's like them. Yeah, okay. yeah, and the voters and. Whatever. So it's much, somewhat like funds when you allocate a staff's expenses. The board approves it over a certain amount, or. Yeah, I don't know how to answer that. Question. No, it's it, it. I mean, it, it, it's not because they just approved the budget, which has it in. Right? I'm assuming. The well, the it's kind of inferred that the department has the authority to spend up to that budgeted amount. Um, there's in our case, we have more latitude in the revolving funds than we do with the general funds. To a certain so, amount. So yeah. Um, the 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 original question was how did you determine how much time to carve one from the other? Right. 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 Uh, it was a, and this, this is my version of what Janice just said. And it was it was us me giving her the number more than her you know in her in her working to get to that number. But I used a similar methodology to come up with a number, and the methodology was we need to reflect the fact that um, the assistant, in this case Courtney's, virtually, not all, but virtually her entire summer is functioning as the camp director. That's the title you just used, right? Um, camp does not function without the person in that position or in Janet's position. Right. Um, a good chunk of Janet's time in the summer is spent overseeing camp. You. Um, they, you're the only two that drive the van, right? So camp doesn't exist without those two positions. And the other things that you just rattled off were Nottingham Day, Soccer Saturdays, all the other things that you use to come up with an estimation of how much time it takes to her to do that work. That's a good methodology. Those are all fee-based programs, right? right? So rather than lawyering it every 15 minutes, we said we need, a, we need to reflect somehow that, that a huge chunk of this time is spent on fee-based programs. We know that in the summer it goes up dramatically to benefit a fee-based program. So that's an easy, you know. Yeah, that one's easy. That's a gimme. Yeah. Not the whole 40 week, not the whole 40 hours a week, but rather than try and manage 15 minute increments it was let's tr let's this is an easily identifiable period of time for payroll purposes it makes it very easy for bookkeeping purposes to say this is the window where these costs go here and these go here specifically to avoid that minute by minute tracking but in a good faith effort to reflect those costs it may or may not be accurate I think it's probably low, but it's easy, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's not big dollars. So that's where the t t that's where the twelve weeks came from. Okay, and it, and it turned into a nice round number, and good. Let's let's go that way. But the twelve weeks was basically what you kind of came up with for all of the events, from all of general those. or revolving. Yeah. Right. right. You know, like no, no, spent and 
that's fun. seven hours on the Halloween party this weekend, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And it, we didn't try to capture all the lead up to summer camp because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of staff time before the kids ever get here. Right. We didn't take any rec revolving funds to pay for those things or the wrap up at the end or any of those right. other things. Right. We don't want to go down the road of micro totaling that stuff. So that's where that came from. Right. So from what I would gather from that, that that any staff monies required to support fee-based programs fee-based and non-fee-based programs but for fee-based would make it easy would be um, determined by the rec director uh, I guess during budgeting during the budgeting process Start that again. Yep. Not sure I can. <laughs> Basically, that the rec director would provide to the board of selectmen during the budgeting process the amount of time that will be required for permanent staff. Permanent, yep. Yeah, permanent staff, town staff, to support fee-based programs. And that for this past year was 12, 12 weeks. weeks. Now, I would assume, Chris, that I assume there's a chain of command of sorts that you are Janet's supervisor. And <clears throat> I would assume that the costs of your salary directed toward recreation come out of the general fund yes okay you don't itemize that no and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want you to okay D is that no, but, you? But, Who are you? But, but those programs <laughs> function just fine without me <laughs> what? I don't I don't drive the van I don't you know oh absolutely. I don't absolutely. solve a crying child you know those are there there are not but here's here's my thought does, process does, Okay. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I forgot it was you. <laughs> is this the kind of thing that you're trying to get at? And does this... It's, in, 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 it's in exactly a, what I was trying to get at. And yes. does this, in a sense, relieve your anxiety about it? I wasn't... There was no anxiety oh, no, about I, it. I, I was I, trying this, to just quantify... It's happening. It, it's happening. How do you account for it? And... There's clearly become a a simple formula that was arrived at to accomplish that that I think could be used on all permanent rec staff to determine the amount of time so that some of so that some of the money could be you know maybe taken out of rec revolving to you know to, to cover some of that well, um, here's my problem with this if we had an individual that was there as the assistant rec director that did not was not the camp director it was another staff individual that came in and was a camp director for the summer permanent staff or just camp staff just camp staff okay there would be no permanent staff camp director does anybody see that as being somehow different I do the normal stuff that would happen at the events that are taking place would all be covered under the normal general fund supporting recreation I disagree. If I understand what you just said, if you, if a person was hired to manage the rec camp program, 
direct the camp program just during camp time, then that would be a paid for program employee be paid through the rec revolving, not through the general fund. Correct, but they're not permanent staff. Right, but you said through the general fund. The, the assistant director would be paid for during the summer months out of the general fund. The assistant rec director, not the camp director, the assistant rec director. Okay. My point being is, Courtney today is the camp director, but she's actually the assistant rec director or, or administrative assistant, whatever position she happens to hold. I'm pretty sure she does more than just camp stuff during the summer. And in, and in all likelihood, it probably is valued, valuable to have somebody in the office answering phone calls, taking care of the day-to-day -day stuff that's going on that perhaps the rec director can't necessarily do when she's out managing camp. recreation programs. Okay, So whatever that position is there, to me, is still focused on the general Thing, and she may that person that position may also help support these other programs that are going on right which then means if we were to come up with that basic concept that you would have to specifically identify how all that stuff is going to work itself out so if Courtney next year is not the camp director but she's manipulating the software but you had somebody else come in and be the camp director that would be paid for out of the revolving fund it would be paid for out of the rec revolving fund as it should be for that camp but Courtney would not that all makes sense I mean from the general concepts that we're working yes yeah, I think it gives the rec department some flexibility to decide okay this event say it's a fee-based event is taking too much of the rec or Janet's time she can hire staff and take it out of the revolving fund to pay for just that fee-based program but I, I in an ideal world every fee and non fee based program Janet's time would be divided evenly among every program and that doesn't really happen but I think for the most part it sounds like it does and when it doesn't she hires an additional staff that's paid through ideally through the the rec revolving fund okay we good with that it seems to make sense to me I mean, that's okay. probably right. dangerous i know <laughs> but, but I, i'm just there's many ways of looking at this and and um in the viewpoint that i'm putting forth however um causes more funds from the general fund to be paid out to recreation staff. Well, that's, that's why the selectmen look to you to say, let's work on a methodology, don't worry about yeah. no. and, and panics. That's yeah, yeah, and th that's fine. I just want to do that. All right. Meeting next Tuesday? Uh, Thursday, I'm sorry. We, are we good on these Thursdays? Do we want to kind of plan these out ahead of time? Be November 5th. My schedule's opened up so we can do it earlier or later, whatever. Mine hasn't, but okay. <laughs> I just figured I'd let <laughs> you you got along with it. You probably right. did better without me last week. Don't know. November fifth? My Thursdays are are good through Thanksgiving. Okay. You don't want to meet on Thanksgiving? <laughs> you did say through. <laughs> Through. Through Thanksgiving. To Thanksgiving. To Thanksgiving. Through. All right, so our next meeting is. 5th, 7.05. Um, November 5th. I cannot make the 12th, but that doesn't mean you guys can't meet. You guys want to meet on the 12th? Can we talk about it next week? Oh, we can. Yeah, I'm trying to lay some groundwork, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, we can mull it over. Okay, all right. Mull it. Yeah. I don't want to mull it. I'm good on the 12th. All right. So. And 19th, if we're yep. so inclined. 
right. I will send the, that to Dawn so that she will post it and put it on the calendar for us. All right. And our agenda is the same um, pretty much every month, so, I mean, or every meeting. Uh, I don't know if that's a problem, but apparently it can be. <laughs> you have I, an agenda? She has one that she has created I, for I, us. I'm chuckling and, uh, you know, not being here last week, when I looked at the agenda at the post office <laughs> and I said, it looks like. so what are we talking about? <laughs> it's very uh, It'll be okay. full next week, but um, this room is available. Okay. There's a lot going on next Thursday night, but this room okay. is available. What is our focus for next week? All right. I would yeah, suggest that's a good way of putting it. We look at um, the charges number two or three. Because I think we're doing pretty good on one. Um, and I don't know which one anybody is more excited about. Take them in order. Um, should the selectmen set a target amount needed in the RRF, and if so, how? And then our other policies or internal controls not currently in place that are recommended relative to the RRF. Which is pretty much what we were just talking about with the whole... Um, Number three, you mean? Yeah. 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 Conversation we just had. So what do so. you want to work on? Two. I think we should work on two. Okay. We should start talking about two. All right. Um, and that one, as far as I'm concerned, is wide open. Um, it would be good to get Janet and Chris's input if they have anything as far as what they... The policy? Are, um, was it number two or is that the amount? Number the amount. the amount. Okay. So as far as what amount they think they oh. need in the revolving fund on a year-to-year -year basis. You guys know that off the top of your head? Well, it's gone back and forth. I mean, it definitely depends on what you're going to do about the van. Um, and when. And when. Um, but do, you know, do you have the any idea what the cost of replacing it would be? Or do you have what the one we currently have cost? It was around 23000 off the state bid list. Yeah, I, I won't be with you next week because I will be at the budget committee down the hall. But to answer your question, it's uh, it needs to grow at a rate sufficient to replace the van when the van. So the van seems to be the. Go, no, that's the that's that's just kind expense. of a, a gimme. Okay. Uh, and then. It needs to be large enough to ride out a program disaster or two mm -hmm. uh, and simultaneously launch a new small to mid sized program. And I think that turns into about 30 or 40 grand, but I don't, I don't know. It depends on how you define disaster. It needs to. The whole point of, of revolving is that it does it does it this. The it doesn't do this. <laughs> it does this. Right. Uh, right now we're doing. But it can do that if you're looking to do something with those funds. Yes, but it needs knowing to that it comes back down well. again and then. Well, you no, no. It. It's I think to be in line with the law about fees, the fees need to reflect more or less the cost of the program. If you want. Uh, that that's true. I understand that. And so it can do this for a van. You know, I think that's a that's a legitimate, you know, life of the van, spread the cost over the life of the van kind of exercise. I think to get any bigger than that probably starts to make the fees look a lot like a tax. If if we are generating enough that that we're creating large sums of money, well, that's the we're, other we're charging too much. And we have to think or, about you know. Well, but, but you, if you look at what's being charged and the fees that are being charged, I think the fees are appropriate for what's being offered. 
they're in line with the rest of the towns and all I that kind of stuff. The, the costs aren't what telling us that. That equation though. is over what time horizon. Uh, well, the, the, the van the, is the one we're using right now, but could that include, for example, soccer fields? Um, in which case, the time horizon would be much bigger and could allow for a much uh, uh, steeper, uh, steeper, uh, or uh, larger, a larger fund. balance. Larger, yeah. I, I think to go back to the stuff I sent you originally, the the guidance from just about everywhere is that this is not the best way to do that. But exactly. So, <clears throat> right, but so is, is that unfairly no, taxing? No, Chris, that guidance for was from they will the municipal association, the not lawyer. everywhere. A, a, an attorney reading of the law. But the law very clearly states, I believe, that it can accumulate for facilities, which is. Yeah, I think that I think and, legally and I, you're absolutely right. But is it fair to the person who pays the fee that pays for the field they never use? I don't know. It's, it's and something that's, we, that's we the could problem. talk about. I don't believe any of the fees being charged right now are being charged in such a fashion to grow the fund. I think what you'll find is there are other things that are involved in the process that make the fund grow. It's not the fees. What makes Nottingham Day doesn't charge any fees. But what? So what makes the fund grow if it's not the fees? That's what I said. Things like Nottingham Day, where you charge vendors to come in. It's 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 the. Uh, but we barely break even on that, right? Yeah, you can see where it's from. It's from summer yeah, camp. Some of it. Well, and 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 what what happens with summer camp? You set a fee based on so many people, and then may maybe more people come. You get more fees. Right. You're not yeah. going to change the fee structure because you get more people to come. Right. It, it's not the way that works. The fee for that participation seems to be adequate. Apparently, we put on good programs. More people come, you get more fees. The only way you can control the revenue that I have found is that if you set a, um, a limit on participation. And other towns do that, so you can, you would know exactly what revenue you were going to get because you didn't take any more kids. But there are also really those in this town, I don't think. But there's other the other aspect of non-residents that come in and pay a surcharge for being a non-resident, and and that exists too. I mean, you you can still run a program that has one Nottingham person in it and all the rest. We have topics for the next meeting. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> yeah. I think we're into them. Um, I motion to, um, to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chris.